A great new capability in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional in 2010 is the addition of the edge weld feature. It allows you to model the welds between shell structures, uh, in other words thin wall structures like this, or it can also be done for sheet metal components as well. Wherever we uh, actually have a weld or a bond, it evaluates the forces and moments from the simulation and then compares those to a standard. Currently it supports the uh, AWS 1.1 standard for the American Welding Society, but we're looking to expand that as quickly as possible to other areas. Then based on the criterion of that standard, it determines whether the weld is big enough to carry the loads that are on that joint, and then gives you great feedback through an edge weld check plot. So let's take a look at how we set that up. I've got a couple of welds already set here. Let's just create a couple more. So we right click on our connectors and add a new edge weld object. We pick between whether it's a fillet weld or a butt slash groove weld, and also whether it's single or double sided. The real difference between single and double sided is going to be when it comes to the calculations and distributing the load over the welds. Here we pick our electrode type, whether it's a steel or aluminum electrode, and also the weld size. We're going to just use a default of 10 mil Create that one, and the intersecting edge is what it automatically detects between the two uh, surfaces. Now if there's more than one edge, it will actually allow you to override this and pick just the edge that you want it to weld. Currently you're limited to, uh, to only doing one edge at a time per definition. Alright, so we'll just quickly do the second one. And we're done. It doesn't take too long to run the model because it is just doing an analysis after the fact. So the main my main time for this model's run, run time is uh, defining the bonded contact between the uh, brackets and the, and the column. Yeah, you can see a nice update with that solver status. Alright, so we've obviously got our stress and deflection. When we right click on the results tab you'll see the new edge weld plot. And just like the bolt check plot we get great feedback visually. I forgot to mention that the size of the weld you specify is also the size of the symbol, which is great. So you can see here it gives us the welds that fail. So in this case it says the calculated weld size is a bit over 12 mil, and for the other one it's just under 12, whereas our acceptable ones are around 8.8 .8 and 9.2. If you go to details, you actually get more interesting information. I'll just stretch this dialog out a little bit more. So you can see here we've got the different weld size, min and max, mean, and also gives you the loading information. And if we click on the plot, actually plot the recommended weld size uh, along the length of the weld. So starting from here, going in the direction of the arrow around the weld, this is the weld size that we need. So you can see there's a couple of areas where it ki it makes sense for the loading that they need the most weld. And again, you can step through all the different connectors to see that. So you can see here, here's where it spikes up at 12 and then minimum is just under 4. So this is a great new capability to help you identify where there's problems with your connectors and then be able to go back and make changes.